Hello, this is Hakka Devine, and today we are going to be reading r slash rules horror. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. With a loading screen, because that's always what we want to start our video with. Rules for shift leads at Rusty's Savory Delights. Warm regards, redacted. We are reaching out to congratulate you for becoming the newest shift lead here at Rusty's. We're happy to have someone and here who's been working here for a while, while being granted promotion to the e position. And trust that you will not let us down. There are a few laws and regulations that your manager will go over with you in person later, but we will be letting you know your new and additional responsibilities ahead of time so you're familiar yourself with them ahead of time. If you have general questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to your manager to your manager or one of your fellow shift leads. Or you can contact HR or corporate at XXXXXXXX. Rules for opening the store. Rule one. Do not open the a building more than 10 minutes for your shift. They do not appreciate uninvited guests. Rule 2. After unlocking the door, make sure you're not set a foot inside the store. Or State your full name and position, shift lead, out loud. 2A. If the store is silent, you may enter the building and either relax in the manager's chair or clock in and begin your shift. Please note that if you're early, you must go straight to the back and sit down in the manager's chair. Do not attempt to go to the bathroom, kitchen, or lounge in the laundry. In the lobby. My bad. To be, if you hear the radio playing music, you may enter the building, but you must stay within the lobby. They are so busy cleaning their mess in the back. But what? A not mind the company of a guest. Do not, under any circumstances, advance further than the lobby, as they do not appreciate uninvited guests. Do not attempt to peek through the clear plastic on the doors. You will not like what you will come across in the back. Once the radio turns off, refer to 2A on what to do next. You on you have only one minute to react, so oh, be hasty. 2C. If the shuttle machine starts making noise, you are not to enter the building. They are not ready for queuing visitors, customers, or workers, and do not wish to be e disturbed. Rule 3. If there are dishes left in the sink, do not attempt to clean them until it is 9.30 a.m. The liquid that comes out of the deposit between in 12 a.m. and 9.30 is not, it's not water and will only create bigger, a bigger mess. Rule 4. Check the soda machine. The soda machine will be off if the key is facing vertically. Likewise, the machine will be on if the key is facing in horizontally. For a, if the a closing shift forgot to turn it off the night before, tape the sign so the machine broken onto the machine. Do not attempt to turn off the machine and do not attempt to drink anything, even the water from the machine. For b, if the machine is off, do not turn it on until 10 a.m. You will invite guests that you do not want to deal with. For c, if the if the shuttle machine was as for making noise when you attend to enter. The Sorry, a first time regarding Rule 2C, you have to tape the sign to the machine broken onto the machine. Do not attempt to turn off the machine and do not attempt to consume any beverage, lest you find yourself craving death's embrace. Rule 5. If anyone enters the store or before 10 a.m., politely turn them down and state firmly, We are currently cut lows, but we'll open and, and, well, and we'll, but we'll be open at 10 a.m. Thank you for understanding. You do not want to see or be a part of the mess if they stay longer than two minutes in the store. What's to do if you break a rule? Please note that there is no coming back from the breakage of certain rules. Rule 1. The only record of 
the employees ever showing up have to work for their shift that day are the DNA results that came back from lead samples scraped from the wall and floor tiles. Rule 2. Your actions will vary depending on the situation. If you, if you arrived early and did not clock in or sit at 2A, if you arrived early and did not clock in or, in or sit in a mattress chair, you will see one of two things. The first is apologizing and keeping your head bowed, staring at the floor before making your way to the back of the house. Sit in the manager's chair and call the number sitting on the desk. Make sure your phone is on speaker or phone so that they can hear they have been pardoned by corporate. That you have been pardoned by corporate. The second option is only applicable if you are in the restroom. Before washing your hands, say the words, I beg for your forgiveness. This physical form has required me to keep it at an inconvenient time. Do not look in the mirror under any circumstances, and when you are finished, walk to the back of the house and sit down in the manager's chair for at least five minutes. They don't understand that it could not be helped, and that you did not mean to be rude or incompetent. <clears throat> to be, if you make the mistake of entering the back of the house instead of launching into the lobby, you must bow out a 90 degree angle and apologize. The radio will play sack the moment you step in the back, in case you have done something wrong. If you exit the back and it goes back to playing music, they have forgiven you. If it continues to play static, do you have a little sneeze, Ken? Sorry. If you continue to play sack when you're in the lobby again, you have 30 seconds to get out the front door. Do not attempt to enter for 10 minutes. Now repeat the process, say in rule two, number two, before entering. Hey, and want to see your timeline is up. To see, don't just enter the building, for nothing can save you now if you do. Jeez, there's a lot. Rule three. Your actions will vary depending on the liquid that comes out. 3a. Blood. This is most common and there will be no repenting required. They need to get rid of it somehow and this is the easiest method for them. 3b. Rusted water. Throw off the faucet and left for or at least 5 seconds from them. Say something along the lines of, that is so funny or that is a great prank. They will be delighted to hear you like their prank and will spare you. 3c. Water. Don't bother turning off the faucet. Immediately turn around with your hands in the air and begin begging for forgiveness. They have not satiated their hunger for a while, for a while, and the reminder is much unappreciated. If you've not broken any rules before, or they have taken a liking to you, they may spare you. If they don't, may your gods have mercy on your soul. Rule 4. If broken, there are three outcomes. 4a. Throwing out the machine will not result in any perilous is actions. Well, as all drinks and will look and smell normal, they will make you very ill and mimic the effects of food poisoning. Food B. Uh, I mean, 4b. Please refer to the section Rules Concerning Customers and more. 4c. Throwing out the machine will only anger them. They have prepared a special gift for anyone who chooses to take a drink from the machine and they will see your attempt at turning it off as an insult. This can result in non-fatal and fatal accidents. Assuming anything from the machine will, will result in a, way or in a fate worse than death. They will be more than happy to claim a new friend for the store. Rule 5. If guests who refuse to leave the store, head back to the, head to the back and lock the door. The one going into the kitchen and the one going into the a lobby. Under no circumstances are you to leave at the back of the house once the two minute time emblem is up. Continue to insist that they leave. 5A. If they do not, well, you're going to want to call the cleanup crew at redacted phone number. You are not, not to leave you are to not leave the back of the house until the radio sites playing classical music. Otherwise they will claim you as well. We discourage anyone from leaving the back of the house as regardless, as a site you will find is not pretty. 5b. When a clean up crew arrives, do not look them in the eyes and do not answer with anything other than yes and no. They will never ask you questions that cannot be answered with a, with a simple yes or no. The only exception that I, I, you can say is a phrase, I'm sorry, but I think you have work to do. And close your eyes. Count to 10 in your head and before opening your eyes again. They ha will have returned to work and you can continue. You just sit in the manager's chair. 5C. 
If you need to leave the building or use the restroom, clearly state, pardon me, there is a human emergency before exiting the back of the house. Try not to interfere with their work. You will be permitted to do as you please. 5D. Any guests who do not exit the door and do not perish within two minutes of residing in the store are not human. Please refer to this section, Rules Concerning Customers, and more. If there are any further questions about the rules regarding opening the store, you are free to contact HR or for any inquiries regarding humans, cleaning crew manager for any inquiries regarding the cleaning crew, HNC for or any inquiries regarding humans, and increased relations and interactions. That was really long and it just got a little bit boring at the end. I have a cat behind me. Remembrance of the Forgotten and Lost. You have fallen between the others. Years of blood and sweat. Wasted. Gone. Go to your place with one of the a kind. Repeating until the end of time. It's a cycle, I tell you. How do I know about it? Let me tell you, child, for I'm dead. Gone. My legacy. My voice. My past, silenced, erased my trails. It's like I've never existed before. You're forgotten. They don't remember you, and they never will. You've fallen between the battleground, in which there is no option to turn back. The greasy, dark abyss collides with you, and with it, it's melt a lot of curse. A perish song, if you will. Those red, pearly, shining eyes aren't a figment of your imagination either. They hunt and hunt those fallen, those dead, those forgotten. They won't let you rest. They would never. A struggle sure will be needed to survive for survival. Rule number one, stay awake. They cannot take you or do anything if you just stay awake. It's like proving your existence by setting your ground. You won't have any to, any to stand if they take you away. Rule number 10. Rule number 2. Wow. Listen to them none. Those phrases they create are nothing more than tricks to make you fall into a short sense of security. They prey on those gullible. Once you've fallen once, falling twice is fatal. Rule number 3. Cover your ears. Once the parish song, uh, once the parish song plays when it is disfigured, a lot, well, a lot of cursed singer. But must cover their ears. If not, one may perish before their own eyes. Rule number four: Stay observant. Keep an eye for everything around you. This should be the sound for every dangerous situation you find yourself into. This comes to play at every second of every minute in here. Rule number five. Scream! Your vocal cords are the only ones who can make your presence known to someone. Talking, begging, crying, singing, screaming, etc. It will always help you call out, even if no one can hear you. You should always try. Who knows, you're not the only one forgotten. Rule number six, wait. They might forget you. They may forget you, but someone's bound to look for you sometime. Rule number seven, keep saying the monochromatic um, aspect of the endless abyss is enough to drive one insane. One can do all sorts of things with all in such a state. The souls beneath you, no, those fallen, those dead, they all scream no more for a reason. Rule number eight. Realize that you're beyond salvation and forget everything. 
everyone you love, your legacy, your friends, your parents, they've moved on. You're lost. The rising champions will pave the way, leaving you in the dust. Those shining gold and silver emblems mean nothing to them. You're not coming back. <sighs> that got dark, didn't it? Guidelines to deal with replicas and UNF. To all the UDA employees with the new threat of replicas due to the UNF, the UDA is going through major and minor er, er, er charges. We request for all of you to cooperate. These guidelines for easier understanding have been split into six parts. Oh my god, why? A to F. A, the, ID, the IT department. This is a new department which manages the UDA website. These rules are for them. One, if you get, no if you get noticed some kind of suspicious activity that suggests the user is part of the UNF, find the location and forward it to the CED. Cultist Eradication Department. B. Replicas in the UDA A office. This is for Arwen Replicas has entered the UDA A office by following UNF's rules. The receptionist should read this. 1. Make sure it's a replica. If the person chats for entering the office, then it's a replica. 2. Use a pistol shoot in the neck. Do not miss. 3. Once it can't move, contact the R&D department. Research and Development Department to take it away. 4. If you miss, log on the office and don't let it escape. Keep aiming for its neck and don't let it bite you. Its bite will make you go unconscious. C. Replica somewhere else. This is when someone clicks the replica button on, this, on the new website. 1. Give them a location and time. The locations are given in the employees folder. 2. Notify the UED, Unnatural Eradication Department. The next set of rules is for the UED. 3. Reach the location 10 minutes beforehand. 4. When someone appears, use the gas on them. It will make them go unconscious. Take the person to safety and to the R&D department. 5. If it doesn't go unconscious, shoot in the neck. Protect the person if you can. Not letting you it escape is your top priority. Six. Your suit is made of material are all stronger than its teeth, except at the joints. Don't let it bite your joints, neck, elbows, shoulders, etc. The Cultist Eradication Department and Unnatural Eradication Department. The ED Depart Eradication Department is having two sub departments called on C E D and U E D. This is access of rules is for C E D. When you get a location and from the IT department or, or S, SD, which is search department, go there immediately. Two, kill everyone there. They're all cultists. Get any documents there too. Three, it's a location by, it's by the cultist encounter button. And on the website, let other people come out who pretend to be vomiting. Four, take the person to safety while everyone else kills the cultists. E. Search Department. The SCE is tasked with searching for whatever UDA needs. If you find a, a, a UNF layer, send the location to CED. If you find Tracy, send location to RD. If you find Jason, send location to RD. F. Recovery Department. RD works on whatever the other, other departments don't work on. If he gets the location of Tracy, capture and send him to the R&D department. He is um, an important test subject who is the, cold, the key to reaching our goal. 2. If you get the location of Jason, kill him. He's a threat to the UDA. We thank you for your cooperation, the UDA. I always don't like the UDA. Not only does it just... To feel like it's way too long, but it feels like 
I think it's a Harvest series that I can't find the rest of, or I just don't want to find the rest of. All right. Now we are on story. I haven't been counting actually. Where's on the story called Die Right? As you lay there on the floor, the pain searing through your body, you can't help but acknowledge the undeniable truth. You're not going to make it out of this alive. The crimson pool spreading around you serves as a stark reminder of your failed attempt at altering your fate. You had hoped that performing the ritual would bring you everything you desired. Money, fame, success. But instead, after an enormous explosion from the incorrect from an incorrect step, only brought you to the brink of death. With adrenaline keeping you awake and shock keeping you from panicking, a sudden thought pierces through the a haze, a botched ritual which was supposed to have fulfilled which was supposed to have been fulfilled by making a pact with God. It could have potentially opened the door for something you couldn't even hope to comprehend, especially considering you never completed it. Your pulse quickens as you grapple with the horrifying implications. If you succumb to this entity, instead of bleeding out, your very soul could become its possession. If the online foreign arms get feverishly studied or to belie be believed, you do not want to believe that this could be true. But a loud bang from another room all but confirms your fear. As panic threatens to consume you, a glimmer of hope emerges. Amidst a shattered room, evidence of candles and salt, you had attempted ritual end. You find aged and weathered letter nestled in within the debris. Desperation drives you to grasp for the its unexpected lifeline. Your fingers trembling as they close around the fragile paper. Logic abandons you in this moment of desperation as you cling to the letter, praying for salvation. Strength you as strange. Even in your terror, the more, the more senses appear on the note as you read. I am you, in your final moments, your fading will willpower dredged up this knowledge in a desperate attempt to survive, or at the very least secure a peaceful passage into whatever lies beyond. You need to follow all of these rules perfectly, or the afterlife you find yourself in will not be pleasant. Rule 1. Stand up. It hurts. You feel like you cannot move, and you want to stay on the ground and accept your fate. You cannot. The rest of these rules will not matter if you, you cannot simply get on your feet. It is coming, and you, and you do not have long. Rule 2. Secure the room. Luckily for you, all you need to do is buy enough time for you to bleed out. Close every door window, and any other entrance that leads into the living room. Barricade any fragile means of entry with anything heavy you can find. Stopping it is impossible, but you can delay it for long enough, hopefully. Rule 3. It cannot directly enter the room anymore, but you are not safe. Your darkness is unbearable and you cannot get rid of it. If it is covering you, it is smothering and you, you need to look around. You shouldn't see anything, but if you would do, God help us, look at it. What you see isn't important. It has already won. What they determine what else you do next. Why are they game? Some parts of this are crossed out. Calm down. I am what is left of you. Everything you feel oh, affects how reliable I am. If you panic, the information I give you may be wrong or useless. Take a deep breath. Rule 3a. If you see a complete stranger or someone you only vaguely remember, this is the best case scenario. Redacted has not been able to learn anything about you yet. But won't say that way for long. So 
so just look at them for a few seconds and they should disappear. If you don't look at them, if you let fear get the best of you, it might be gone when you look back. It might be gone, or it might be you have been found. Rule 3b. If you see a family member or somebody close to yourself, close your eyes and take a few breaths. When you open your eyes, it should be gone. This isn't great, but it still doesn't know enough. If you don't do this, it'll get closer. You have one more chance. Do not let it get any closer. Rule 3. Is it you? Are you looking at yourself? No, you aren't. Think. You're alone. It can't be you. You are right here. Think. 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 You can't be cut. I mean, towards you, you can't take you. Shout. I can't focus. You can't focus. We're going to be taken. And shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Rule four. They learn from everything that you do. It knows what you fear. It wants to know what you are. It will use what it knows against you. You can't let it. Do not think about anything related to yourself. Think about nature or a talk show host or everything that you are. Because it doesn't matter. We are nothing. We will be raptured. You will be you're theirs. Help. Help. Why are you doing this? Do you want to rot? Please, let me help. Breathe. It isn't and too late. You can still die. Rule 5. You are close. You are pale and weak. It is close too. You need to beat it. You cannot kill yourself. That would be a sin. A sin is what it wants. Turn on the lights. It will not like it. Rule 6. You cannot see it, so you will hear it. It will whisper horrible things about you. They may be true, they may not be. Either way, you need to believe with all your heart that it isn't true. If you realize that it isn't lying and that you deserve what is coming, what it says as holds truth, you have already given it what it needs. It uses the information. It learns to take your soul when you die. You are the heiress. It is over. You will be dead soon. You are terrified and understand. To be blamed, and some of the information I gave you was probably wrong. I apologize. Like I said, every emotion you felt influenced what I gave you. Fortunately, there is no way to know if you were successful in dying correctly until you have actually died. I am you, so I hope you got right. Goodbye. Damn, that would have been a good, like, closing story. It's better we have three more. Yay, long let the times again. Oh, no, we're right there. Is someone you know acting weird? Something about them seems weird. Maybe it's their posture, the way they talk, their habits. No matter what it is, something is definitely off about them. Follow these rules to survive. 1. Make sure it's unnatural. This can be checked by two ways. If they had an injury that suddenly got healed, then it's unnatural. You can also request check footage of them entering an a UDA office if they went there recently. If they chance something before entering, it, then it's an unnatural. Once you make sure it's unnatural, follow the next steps. Two, don't let it know that you know it's an unnatural. That will result in it being hostile to you. Three, do not mention anything unnatural related to it. It might get mad. Four, ignore it when it's great when it speaks about the great OU. Do not listen to it. Use headphones if necessary. 5. Go on to the UDA, UDA website and click the replica button. You'll be allotted a time and place. 6. Keep a knife hidden with you. It may come in handy later. 7. Take it to the place it's at the time given to you. Don't tell it where you're going. 7A. If it gets suspicious, stab it in the neck. It's a weak spot. It won't die, but will be unable to move for a while. Call our helpline number and give us your location. Seven B. If it doesn't get suspicious, lead it to the location. You'll go unconscious after reaching there. Don't worry, since we'll keep you safe. You may never see the real person again, but no person is better than a malicious imposter. The UDA again. 
<sighs> Last two stories. How to donate to the dead. Oh yeah, I forgot to bet this story. Hang on, I'm actually about to do that really quickly. I decided to move on to the next one instead of reading that one. It got a little bit too violent. So instead, library initiation. Hey, I see you made it to the library. I'm glad you took us up on a job offer. It's been a while since we've had a new employee. I think it's around time for some fresh blood. Anyway, I'm Harold and this is Cryptic Creek Library. This library is the only place for books and tomes of any kind. We have everything here. All the library card holders are very interesting pe people and I'm sure you'll enjoy meeting and getting to know them. Just be mindful that people around the, the creek are a bit different. Here's the orientation binder. Please read it thoroughly and welcome to your first day. One, now this may seem obvious, but you'd be surprised. Our guests are humans and inhumans. Please be polite and respectful to all. You don't know what will happen if you don't. Two, please make sure all books that return earned are from the library before you put them on the shelf. Books outside the library tend to be aggressive to the books here. Three, some of our books are a bit hyperactive. In this binder, there are guides to these books. If someone does, let's go. If something does go wrong, refer to your binder and follow the steps. 4. If someone comes in and just walks right by without showing the library card, get under the desk and close your eyes. You will hear sounds that may haunt you, but it's better than the janitor seeing you during this time. 5. If the heat is ever off and the air conditioning is cold enough to frost the windows, grab the red jacket. It will be heavy, but put it on. An outside book, book is trying to destroy one of our books. Just say by the computer and Harold will take care of it. 6. There are first aid kits everywhere, as workplace is ac accidents are not ideal. Especially when the scent of blood travels far, very easily. 7. Please make sure books get returned to the right place. Then you must deal with the annoyed spirit and someone asking where they, they can find the book. Eight, please do say hi to Harold. He's a 54-year-old man, and he, and he does great work making this place spotless. He's very polite, and you'll see him often. Do be nice and give him a wave. Nine, if all the lights are, are on except for the ones by the employee counter, get out. Ten, if all the windows are open and you can't close them, get be behind the... You counter and read guide 7. 11. Harold doesn't take days off. If he has not been to the counter, say hello or good morning. Call me, then leave. This place will fall apart without Harold. 11.5. Harold loves sweets. The occasional hard candy makes him really happy. That's we all for now. We are so glad you joined our little family. Fresh blood is so hard to find these days. Make sure you read on the guides to specific customers. And that was r slash rules horror. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!